All right, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Tuesday, August 13th, Working Group Component Standard Meeting. Um, we had a great meeting last week, kind of brainstorming a bunch of different component config stuff with uh, SIG Cluster Lifecycle and some of the API Machinery folks. Um, you can see the notes for that and the link in our meeting notes and the uh, YouTube recording for that meeting is also up in our playlist. Um, so, uh, we have kind of a short agenda today. I guess let's just get started with that. Um, Alex, if you want to jump in on that. Yeah, sure. Um, so, hi everyone. My name is Alex, quite new contributor to the project. Um, Lee was so kind to give me a little uh, on contributor onboarding last time. And uh, he suggested that I pick up this pull request, which um, was initially created by uh, Lucas. Um, so I basically just took it, um, added some tests, made it all green. Um, but I do have a couple of questions in regards of how this all ties into like the bigger effort. And I think this was also one of Ross's questions uh, in the comments. Um, so I guess like the purpose of this um, PR is like to allow for serialization of multiple YAML files. Um, so I just wanted to know, you know, because I found this point in the uh, original cap of the component-based config, um, what has been discussed in this regard? And are there any plans on, you know, how this functionality is to be supported in the existing serializers or like any other points where, you know, this could be a foundation of? Um, so yeah, well, I'm still trying to wrap my head around all the, you know, concepts around decoding and coding. I think I'm missing a couple of big picture points. So I just wanted to know if, yeah, you guys can share some insight on that. Lee, why don't you take that? It seems like it's up your alley. Yeah. Um, so I had like five minutes to look at this earlier. Um, from what I remember, the manufactory here is allowing it's currently used in kubitm right now um so this patch here is porting it over into an api machinery runtime library basically so it can be just used in other places what the meta factory does is it allows you to figure out what the gvks are uh, for a stream of multiple yaml docs and basically, if it's a primitive that's necessary, if you're going to be doing things in the style of kubitm, uh, where you are trying to point at a stream of bytes that potentially contain multiple things, different kinds. And then now the output of the meta factory is a list of GBKs. And then you can switch on it conditionally to do various you know, controller or component config or API related things. Um, hopefully that's clear. And then, so the desire here is to move the meta factory uh, from a place where only Kubidam can use it into the API machinery staging um, dependency. And there's a couple benefits to that. Um, one being that it's no longer in, in the core tree. Um, so it's going to be in something that you can actually vendor separately from Kubernetes. It's a huge benefit. Uh, and then we can use that primitive from the component base repository, uh, which is another staging dependency uh, that's not part of the core tree, to then do like multi doc stuff. And so at the bottom of this patch, if you were to just scroll down um, to the to the last comment, I think. Um, Ross here, I think, was the person who asked if we are maybe going to extract split YAML documents. I would imagine that that would probably go into component base. Um, do you have any thoughts on that, Ross? Yeah, so uh, for me, this is like uh, trying to build from bottom way up rather than top down approach. And uh, basically, I see something that amounts uh, like uh, network uh, adapter uh, being introduced in a system with no networking layer yet. So it, it's a little bit unclear to me. Uh, 
what is the scope of this change and uh, what is going to be introduced after that. Although I'm, I'm actually pretty much okay with this. And as long as uh, API machinery folks are okay with this, I'm, I'm going to approve it for Kubernetes. Yeah. Would it? Would you want to see more work that actually consumes the library somewhere else? I mean, obviously, we're consuming it in Kubernetes, right? So if it's being moved to a shared location, then yeah. I think. I think. Uh, oh, go ahead, Ross. Yeah, I think that uh, probably I want to see more things like uh, split the YAML documents and more things being extracted just to see what the, the interface of the thing is going to be, uh, like how it's supposed to be used by third parties. It's a, I mean, this is definitely, it's worth talking about as well as to like whether we see like reading multiple component config types from a single document as the primary way we would like to configure things. Because right now, like kube proxy configuration is a single struct or a single API type, sorry. Right. So like, do we, do we imagine that something like the scheduler or the kube controller manager, right, might read many different kinds of configuration documents in a stream? The controller manager is the one that is most likely um, because it has so many subcomponents. Yeah, and it allows you to do maybe some more interesting things, right? Like have a component based configuration document in the same stream as other ones, and then have those implicitly be related with like some kind of merge operation. Right, yeah, there could be maybe stuff like that too. I guess another question I haven't asked yet or I don't remember if I've asked it, was do we look at what Cube Control does for multi-doc support? Because it does support multi-doc. Um. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's like, we, we should probably have a better habit of that. Um, looking at lots of like tools out in user land, right, with like, Argo and Flux and mm -hmm. Jenkins X and stuff, they basically just shell out to Coop Control because it's the gold standard for. Yeah. Well, customized it also supports multi doc, right? So there's, I, like, I should, probably should have said this earlier, but um, we should make sure we're not duplicating work that's already been done. Yeah, I mean, that might be mm -hmm. worth doing. Do we want to do that before this gets merged, just so we? Have some yeah, foresight. Just take a look. I, like I, it's interesting to me that it's you know it's done in those places, but it's not in API machinery, right? Um, one question. So I was like digging through the code base in API machinery, and there's like package util yaml decoder .go, and there's already like new document decoder which takes a split yaml document function. So I was wondering how this. Or if this is used at any place, or how how this can be used? Do you, do you have a link to the code? Uh, yeah. Let me see. Talk somebody's memory. Wait one second. Uh, post it in chat. So this is passed to a scanner as a split function. Yeah, looks like it does multi doc. It looks fairly similar to the Cubanium one. So yeah, okay, so yeah, um, let's take a look at that stuff. Alex, maybe you wanna do that and see if it's basically the same as what we have in the QADM thing we're trying to patch in, or if there are ergonomic differences where it would make sense to make some changes and just you know help figure out what the direction is here. Okay, sure. Well, and yeah, actually help me understand the usage a little bit. Um, because the meta factory, it returns, the signature was a list of GVKs, right? 
and are the associated bytes for each GVK returned with it, or is that just like meta information about it that says, hey, if you you know want to look at this, then you can expect that there's going to be three of these things, two of these things. Mm. Yeah, it's possible that manufacturing might be easier to use for Kubernetes types specifically if you have that expectation. So I think that's just what we need to look into. Yeah, I mean it's notable, right, that that API machinery function was private, so it's it's used for something. But right, but it's I we yeah as long as it stays private, we can't provide it as a tool. Yeah. So. Unless there's a configuration option on it, I think it's like the function like new new document decoder returns a YAML decoder, which has a scanner as a field, and the scanner uses the split YAML document, the private function as the split function basically. So I guess you would call some scanner functions on the decoder, but I'm not sure. And then we would, yeah, basically need to find the, the parent public functions that are being used in other code to see examples. But, um, yeah, so this is decode on Marshall's the next so, algorithm. Yeah, um, just to make sure two things so that we're not losing what the action item here is. So basically, um, in the note taking section, I'm writing uh, goal is to provide multi doc API machinery helpers in staging instead of core. And then um, we would like to review other multi doc support in existing code other than Kubernetes. Yeah. Um, some examples being the uh, kubectl multidoc support, the customize stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and stuff then in API machine already, which it appears I can put the link in there. In a YAML decoder by proxy. Um, yeah, or just yeah, because it looked like it just natively does multi doc and then. You're responsible for decoding the stream like all the way through, is what this looks like. But the other question is whether, you know, even if things are public in this package, the question is like whether it's designed for people to consume that as a library or if it's just still just internal. So that needs, somebody needs to go figure that out. <clears throat> Maybe Alex will be. Yeah, I can look into that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just from some of the discussion points you've brought up, you're not running into many like major roadblocks in understanding how all of the different abstractions are assembled. Um, so far, no. I mean, I'm still figuring it out, right? But I haven't encountered like a, a major roadblock in that in that journey. I would say, um, just for like understanding wise, um, or like what we want to achieve is basically. Um, we give this map or like some meta factory to a serializer, right? And the serializer would be able to parse a multi doc YAML document. Is that correct? Um, sorry, I was thinking about something else. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, at the end of the day, 
like we we want to be able to like get a a strict serializer like multi yaml doc or multi document implementation that a component can use so if you're setting up a new component um, or as we're retrofitting all of the old components uh, that you would be able to um, right and the strict serializer specifically is something that you know is likely to be separate from the existing api machinery because that is something that's useful for component config, but would be a breaking change for Kubernetes APIs, which currently ignore um, unspecified or unrecognized field. Names. Yeah, I'm actually unsure if I answered Alex's question. <laughs> what were you asking? <laughs> um, so you got like in API machinery, you got like runtime serializers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so such a serializer would be able to parse um, or serialize a multi-doc multi YAML file. Is that correct? Like this is what we want to achieve? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, gosh, and I, I don't even know what the interface through the codec factory is like for this. I have to read the Kubidium part to figure it out. Yeah, I have to reread that every time. I have to remember. I honestly, that abstraction in, like is really messy. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's just hard to work with. Um, yeah. It's, I, I think it's a really leaky abstraction. Um, I, at some point, it would be interesting if we could just flatten Kodak Factory and serializers. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was a bit um, confused because I think most like the bulk logic of the serializers is on the JSON. So you have like a JSON serializer, but then you set an option that it's able to pass YAML, um, and you pass it a meta factory, and then but you also have like a serializer YAML which only has like two functions. So I was like, yeah, I wasn't quite sure how this all ties together there. Yeah, there's and there's. To my knowledge, there's no design document that explains how these things are intended to work, which kind of leaves every time somebody touches the code, it probably meanders in some unintended direction. Um, and yeah, making sense of how these things are related has been difficult for me personally um, in the saga of this next bullet point, which is that codec factory options uh, did get merged. I, I just saw uh, apparently like a few days ago. <laughs> I don't even know how I missed that. Um, but um, yeah, so we have the ability to actually use the native uh, API machinery libs now uh, to do strict serializing through codec factory. So that's that's a thing now. You can vendor it and it should work. That's awesome. Um, but so I don't know how Codec Factory relates to multi-doc support at the moment. Um, because if the multi-doc stuff is in the decoder, um, then you're, you're two abstractions down from Codec Factory, uh, which means we probably the meta factory does it take a byte stream? I don't know. Anyway, so Codec Factory is going to do all the defaulting um, stuff, uh, which is great. But uh, now we need to figure out how to marry some of these ideas. Uh, I probably have to look at the Kubidm code to figure out what we do there and then see how that compares <laughs> to everything else. Um, one nice thing about this patch merging is that we actually have an interface now where there's we've got like four other PRs that are all test lib stuff um, in order to validate the component config APIs that they are assembled in a way that is expected. Uh, so things like the domain names you know, follow our expected format and um, 
if the rule is broken there, that there's an actual exception that's put into the test code for that API. That's um, great. Where, where is that now? Um, it's I, on some of them I linked in the tracking issue. Okay. Lucas has had those patches open since like March, I think. I mean, those are all Lucas's PRs that you're going to test. That's what that is. Sorry, Mike, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Oh, those were all Lucas's PRs from before. They they were um, not the Codec Factory options thing, but the yes, so. the test lib stuff. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I can find those. Yeah, the the test lib stuff will need to be restructured a little bit, um, but in general, most of what's there is there. I have a bunch of like branches that I've been working on that I can probably revive. Um, so this should be coming down the pipeline soon. But uh, yeah, that's that's all that I had to comment on. So are there any um, work items which should be carried over from Lucas's work, or what's the status there? Because you said those are unlocked in a way. Uh, yeah, basically. Um, there's, we need to submit a patch, probably independent patches so that we don't get into like owners, like craziness. But, um, yeah, we need a test library, uh, that just exposes some, like a runner and some common checks that are parameterized. And then when we instantiate the scheme, then the APIs are available, and we can check to see, hey, do these APIs conform to what we expected? And then we'll have a patch for each component uh, API. Okay. And uh, I think, from what I what I remember, those patches are pretty. They have enough structure to to revive. All right. Yeah, if, there, if you need any help or if there's anything to pick up, um, let me know. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if, if you can figure out what multi-doc is looking like for all of those bullet points, um, that sounds like a pretty big task. All right. Um, well, I'll dive into that, into the open chart first and get those uh, action points working on and then we can see where we go from there. Yeah, is if that's something that you're looking to do, which I think we'd all be very glad to uh, read the summary. Yeah, that would uh, be awesome. Links to the independent pieces of code that are doing that right now. So then we can talk about, okay, well, it looks like this Metafactory thing is something we want to merge, and we know we can consume it in Codec, Codec Factory like this or whatever. Um, then that would be excellent. Cool. Yeah, I'll look into it. Um, there might be some some newbie questions coming up, so be okay. prepared. <laughs> and then um, I guess we've got a few more minutes. Uh, Mike, did do you know what the status of the kub, was it Kublet legacy flag patch? I I haven't seen updates on that in a couple of weeks. I don't know if it is here. Uh, um, but yeah, we need to follow up with him on that. And then I, I also wanted to ask quick, Ross, if um, you need any help getting that uh, Q proxy cap in. Um, it seemed like the discussion had kind of stalled on that, but I, I want to merge at least some version of that and get another alpha version out with that split refactoring. Yeah, so I actually got uh, most of the prototype of the first alpha. That's the like mode consolidation done, and but probably this is going to merge at least in the the next cycle. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to get the make sure the cap gets resolved, and, and so whatever you have to do to to revise it and like just get everyone to say okay, this first step is good. Yeah. Okay, so I'll probably just uh, put on hold the second, like the last two steps, just leave the, the first, the mode consolidation one, 
and uh, merge like this. And uh, if we decide to uh, like introduce, reintroduce these steps in uh, like alpha three or alpha four, uh, we can always do that. Okay, that sounds good. That's a good start. Yeah. And then um, as far as the, okay, notes, 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 we're taking notes. Um, could, was it, this was the Kube proxy cap. Yeah, it was called the Kube proxy graduate to beta, but it's really a Kube proxy refactor over a few alphas is the real goal. And then eventually go beta. But. Instead of beta, let's get another alpha release. Yeah, the kept actually already said that in it. Yeah. Um, it just, I, I don't know if everybody understood that. Um, okay. And then um, when Justin was chatting about the optional fields thing, um, do we want to prioritize that immediately, or do, are we going to keep um, I would like to see something like that happen before we move more things to data. But I, like it can happen in parallel to the other refactoring work that Ross is working on. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we can't. I, I would say we probably can't change like the format of, of structs, even if the APIs don't change, right? right. Uh, without a new version, so. Yeah, I, I have to look back at the notes from last week too. I can't remember if we had an AI for moving that optional fields thing forward. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, I mean, that's just about our, our time. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we'll get the, the test slip stuff going, um, hopefully, and by next meeting, we'll, we might have an update on the um, legacy flag patch to Kublet. And then Alex is going to go try to figure out what our approach should be for the multi-doc stuff. And hopefully, we can keep the code as proposed. And then, um, yeah. And then we'll get the Kube proxy stuff going more. Cool. So Ross, you're you're working on that, right? Yep. All right. Cool. Um. Yeah. Any any last comments? Do we have any need for more, like project management help or anything like that? Cool. Well, um, we saw one of our guests had to drop. Other than that, thanks everyone for joining and let's right. uh, yeah thank you have a nice day bye bye, bye.